thank you for this, and thank you, uh, Julio, for actually having so many amazing people, 20-minute walk from my home, and many people I often only get to see in Kenya. Uh, so uh, and a very important topic, of course. Uh, so cell phone trials have been asked to talk a bit about. I'm an ID physician and somehow got uh, I'm getting pegged more and more as a, as a tech, technologist of some sort, which, uh, but I think we all work together on this. Um, thanks again for the cascade mes mes uh, messages that have already been relayed. Uh, so if we're saying treatment is prevention, uh, really that means that, and if that one's well defined in the top, that means access and uptake is prevention, that means adherence is prevention, that means retention is prevention. Um, and really, the only thing I'll say further on this is when you put those all together, really the one thing that captures all of those is engagement, and that's really engagements of patients will really uh, solve all of those things uh, if the health system supports it. Uh, Mobile health has grown hugely in the last few years to, to an entity of its own in all aspects. And there's often question about whether it's all hype, but if we look at the realm of HIV, which we in this room care about an awful lot, if you look at the, uh, and that ends too soon, but this is the HIV uh, epidemic growth in the world, and you notice the dark bars on the bottom are really resource limited uh, settings. Um, thankfully, uh, somewhat delayed, but eventually, and, and due to many uh, efforts, there's a, a treatment response, a life-saving treatment response to antiretrovirals, and again, the dark bars are in resource-limited settings, so that's uh, fabulous news, but lots of challenges ahead. Uh, and if you look at the latest graph, which can actually be back overlaid over the other one, uh, this is the growth, growth of mobile phones in the world, and again, the dark bars represent resource-limited settings, so really, uh, groundbreaking change in, in tools that are available. Uh, so I think we really have to look at mobile phones as being a gift as a tool that we can, we can try and use uh, in any way possible to strengthen our health systems and patient engagement. Uh, so we looked back at, at Kenya in 2006, uh, when I was living there, and the, uh, it looks almost like an outbreak map, and, but that really over, overlays the cell phone coverage where most of the population in is, is and most people with living uh, with HIV actually are. Uh, at that time, though, we questioned patients in our clinics, often making $2 or less a day, and 89% even at that time had access to mobile phones regularly, uh, and they were using them for everything in their daily lives. Uh, sex workers were using them for clients, people were using them to uh, stay in touch with family and business, etc. Uh, but only 12% were, had ever called their clinic, so they weren't using them for their health management. Um, so we had a, a group get together at that time and brainstorm, which include all of the clinic staff and actually eventually a, a number of clinic patients to say how can we harness in a systematic way the cell phone use to, to strengthen, uh, strengthen care. And they came up with a very simple model, and I think the simplicity is, is powerful in the infect, effectiveness of it. You know, we considered things like confidentiality, logistical issues like uh, your phone's run out of battery, the cost of credit, um, and how often people want to be messaged, actually. Uh, so we came up with a very simple protocol where the, we sent a weekly SMS Monday morning, Mambo, which is, how are you? So it doesn't say anything about HIV or medicine, but they know where it's coming from. Uh, and their response is either Sawa, which is fine, or Shida, which is a problem. And if, if they identified they were Shida or a problem, then a nurse uh, would call them back and help them sort out the issue. Uh, we studied this as a randomized clinical trial, uh, with, which was a collaborative effort with great support from PEPFAR and CDC as a, as a PHE. So we, we chose three sites in Kenya. One is a rural site, government site. Uh, one is an urban uh, lower income area, and the other is an urban uh, faith-based uh, hospital site. And we did a random individual level randomized clinical trial of of uh, 538 patients uh, focusing on the outcomes of adherence and uh, suppression of viral load at 12 months post-initiation. Uh, the question that always comes up when we speak to uh, district uh, health officers and so on who are managing resources is the human resource question. And if you're asking people how they're doing, how much time do you need to spend responding to them? Uh, and we were actually, what we actually found in the first three months after initiation, 6.1% of patients responded that they had a problem. 
and that fell to 2% afterwards. And that's what we would expect. People are getting new with the medication. That's where most of the morbidity and side effects occur. Overall, 3%. So that means a nurse following 1,000 patients would actually only have 33 responses, uh, people identifying a problem each week to look after. Uh, and they actually found that that made their work more focused and, and quite uh, engaging. Uh, so the primary outcome of this, stu of this study, uh, self-reported adherence, uh, was significantly improved from uh, those reaching 95% adherence to, from 52%, from 50% in the control group to 62% in the SMS group, and viral suppression at less than four copy, 400 copies improved from 48%, which is not very uh, favorable uh, to 57%, so a significant improvement, but still demonstrating some, uh, some ways to go. And if we look at the various subgroups uh, of who benefited the most, really, uh, we weren't powered for these, but just to get an idea on the forest plot, most of the dots are, are to the left of the line, so, so we really didn't identify any, any key group of person that we could predict who might benefit the most. Uh, and again in Kenya, a very exciting trial in, in Western Kenya was reported a few months later in AIDS. Uh, we had uh, published that in a few months prior uh, in The Lancet. And in this trial, uh, looked at, at a very important thing. So they used one-way text messaging, uh, not an interactive method we did, so telling people it's their reminder or a longer version, it's your reminder uh, and we care about you, some motivational uh, discussion. It was a forearm trial where they looked at long versus short and daily versus weekly message versus standard of care, and their outcome was adherence by MEMS caps. Um, and they, they didn't have viral load as an outcome, but what they did find is that daily text messaging had absolutely no effect on adherence, uh, and weekly text messages uh, did have a positive effect on adherence and reduced short-term treatment interruptions. Uh, so again, supporting evidence that uh, uh, contacting patients through SMS could support adherence uh, if it's done right. Uh, another randomized trial from Kenya seems to be uh, providing a lot of recent evidence in this field. Uh, my colleague Michael Chung and, and others looked at the ad uh, benefit of targeted adherence counseling on adherence uh, and viral suppression and, and not surprisingly targeted adherence counseling works and had a lasting effect and we're happy to hear that. Uh, they tried an electric alarm device, which is the natural pe thing people jump to sometimes with text messaging, uh, but this was an alarm device time to tell them when to take their medications, and as you can see, uh, there was absolutely no effect on adherence or viral suppression, so just the reminder aspect on itself, on its own, did not seem to uh, do the trick. It's a huge field, and there's a lot else going on. Uh, one of the areas that really requires a lot of work and is very important to us is monitoring adherence. I just want to make the uh, clarification that monitoring adherence is very different from promoting adherence, and we still don't know which aspects of monitoring may support adherence and which may actually uh, be uh, counterproductive for adherence. Uh, in fact, I think uh, Melanie mentioned some issues about monitoring and over-monitoring may actually be a deterrent to adherence. We have to be very careful, but I think there's a lot of important work that needs to be done there. Um, and there's some great work being done there. Uh, I'll just quickly review a few of the other smaller studies. In North America, there's a couple of small trials that came out recently uh, looking at text messaging versus uh, a beeper device, and then a Cameroon study, uh, which posed some challenges of colleagues working on. Uh, we haven't seen the final results and uh, another study uh, that was done uh, recently uh, by, by uh, Kalachin and others that looked at behavioral self-regulation and counseling with SMS, which in a small study seemed to have some benefit in the North American setting. Just on the guidelines issue, I thought I'd throw this one in. Uh, the, we don't have anything that says that text messaging improves uh, use of antiretroviral guidelines at this point. Uh, but a recent important study came out in the Lancet, also randomized cluster randomized trial from Kenya that showed that using uh, text messaging to support malaria caregivers improved their use of guidelines and, and drug delivery for malaria treatment. So I think there are some possibilities there. Uh, a lot of this work just got done for us uh, by the Cochrane Group, which did a, a recent review of 
the literature in this space, and uh, they said there's high quality evidence from two randomized controlled trials that text messaging at weekly interviews is, intervals is efficacious. Um, and then the one trial uh, we were involved in that showed viral load suppression, which I think is important in this context of this meeting. We've done some preliminary cost saving. I know treatment as prevention, uh, in addition to treatment as care, is going to uh, be costly, uh, but there are ways to save costs, and one of those is improving adherence. So we, we modeled the adherence benefits of our trial on health systems using some published models in a very uh, back-the-envelope type of way at this point. And, and really, in, by two or three years, there's enormous uh, health system saving by improving adherence. So evidence-based adherence interventions have a role not only in improving the effectiveness of, of treatment as prevention, but also in the resource allocation uh, for treatment as prevention. Uh, in this model of PEPFAR, we're looking at 2.5 million people. Uh, the cost savings uh, after an investment of $29 million to scale up the program, theoretically, uh, would result in $143 million of cost savings. Uh, I'll defer, uh, there's a poster, Mia, uh, our epidemiologist, uh, Mia Vanderkop has a poster looking at SMS for treatment as prevention where we looked at adjusting that trial for uh, non, what we're calling non-transmissible viral loads to be debated, uh, but less than 1,500 based on Quinn's important study. And the number needed to treat there uh, goes to 12, which would result if you looked at seven, very theoretically, 7.1 million people receiving uh, treatment, that's an extra uh, 612,000 or people in a year that would have uh, non-transmissible viral load. So again, a tool, potential tool for treatment as prevention. Quick summary of the evidence, adherence monitoring. Uh, we don't know yet whether that promotes adherence, but important work is being done. Targeted adherence counseling works. Digital alarm reminders appear not to work, at least in that setting. Uh, One-way text message reminders uh, may work if they're given at the right frequency with the right message, and then two-way cell phone uh, SMS check-ins uh, appeared to work, at least in, in one randomized trial. Uh, the weekly, two trials, two large randomized trials suggesting weekly text messaging works uh, provides a, a good start for the evidence base. So my take-home messages are just uh, really keep it simple. Uh, the, with every step, I think, of, of complexity in a, in a text messaging system, you lose a person. We had an 82-year-old uh, woman, Maasai-speaking woman from a rural area who was involved in our trial, starting antiretrovirals at 82. Uh, her grandson received the text messages back and forth for her, and she found it very helpful. She came to advocate for the program for us. If we tried to make it too complex, I'm not so sure she would still uh, have been, been able to benefit from the program. Keep it low cost, of course. Uh, resource limited settings and vulnerable groups are key. Uh, conduct controlled, controlled studies. It's not only what works, but we need to, uh, we saw a lot of evidence of intuitive things that we thought would work that don't work, so we really need to prove what works with important outcomes. But at the end of the day, seize the opportunity because it's a tool that's there, and I think it's a gift that we need to use. Uh, and this is just, I think someone said there's more pilots in M Health now than the US military. Uh, or Air Force. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but I think we follow the evidence. So, Welltel Retain, where we have a nice, uh, some, some support from NIMH to work on a pre ART retention uh, trial in Kibera with our partners uh, AMREF in Kenya. We're working on some context of addressing uh, how we might adapt this to a resource rich setting here in, in Vancouver. Uh, with some support from Bristol Myers Squibb through the BCCDC Foundation and uh, working on pre exposure prophylaxis with the EPIC team with Albert Liu and Jonathan Fuchs and others, uh, and Welltel uh, in TB. I think it's really key that we don't look at uh, HIV in isolation, and these, these really have, we have the potential to strengthen health systems that are, uh, go beyond HIV. And we got a, a recent grant from Grand Challenges Canada to develop a nonprofit organization which is going to help us help others implement uh, evidence-based uh, and health interventions into their programs. Uh, and, and I think uh, so the future is now. I think that was an old picture of, of uh, 
the Captain Kirk up there, and I think the little boy has a nicer phone. <laughs> Thank you.